The average commercial airplane weighs more than 150 tons. Have you ever wondered how it is that something that heavy can fly? To understand how airplanes fly, first you need to understand something about air, what it is and how it moves. On page 20 to 23 of our notes, we have nine activities to help you learn more about how air behaves and how airplanes fly. To join us, you will want three or four ping pong balls, a hair dryer, preferably one with a cool air button, three balloons, and one small object, such as a peanut, a raisin, or a penny, some string, a stick or ruler, or any other long object that you can tie two balloons to, a roll of toilet paper, two pieces of paper, a paper clip for making your paper helicopter, and as an optional item, you might also want some tape. I'm Science Mom. I'm Math Dad. I hope you'll get those supplies and then join us today to explore the incredible physics of air. Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're watching from. Today is our first experiment day. And I want to say right off the bat, if you don't have experiments for some of these things, it's perfectly okay to watch and then do it later. So if you don't, if you don't have the supplies, and in fact, even if you do have the supplies, you may find that because we're going through so many different ones today, that you'd rather just wait and try them afterwards. But regardless, this is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna ask you to make some predictions today. And I'm curious whether you'll do better than me. So go to itempool.com slash science mom slash live if you are joining us live. And if you're watching the replay, at science.mom slash earth science, there is a link where you can participate in the polls because with each of these experiments we do, we are going to ask you for your prediction and then we'll, you'll see if your prediction is correct. This is the best way to learn. So whether it's these experiments or other experiments you're doing, I hope you will always make a prediction in advance. So what's the value of the prediction? I, I guess it would make you think about your hypothesis. So, so theorize, all right, how would the outcome be, or what will the outcome be, or how could it change? It, it definitely helps you learn more. It helps you evaluate your hypothesis and your ideas, and it helps you understand why why you're seeing the results that you are, if it, you'll take a minute to predict in advance. I think it also helps me care more about a question if, if I've tried to predict it one way or another, because then I care, ooh, what's it going to work out to be? Yeah, so page 20 of the notes is where we're gonna start. And our first experiment is to look at a balloon. Is ooh. a balloon going to be lighter or heavier once we blow it up? So does, does, does the air have weight to it is, is what we're testing here. Yes, so our first question, will the inflated balloon be lighter, heavier, or weigh the same? We're gonna begin accepting answers and I want you to make a prediction. What do you think we'll see? And for this experiment, we tied the balloons to a ruler and then we, we weighed, you know, just how the ruler tips is gonna tell us if it's lighter, heavier, or the same. Ooh, the votes are coming in. That's right. I always expect to see which category we're voting for, but it's always a mystery. It's a mystery until we reveal the answers so, and then we'll find out. So if the inflated balloon is heavier, then it the inflated balloon would go down, right? Yep. And if the empty balloon is heavier, then the empty balloon will tip. Okay. And it looks like we're pretty evenly split, Math Dad. I'm seeing pretty similar results with our answers. Right. Well, this question and, and many of them today, I think you could try to argue it multiple ways. So I'm curious. Let's find out. All We're right. Finish and reveal. And heavier is the most popular answer, and heavier is correct. Ooh. Now we have a clip to play for you to show you what happened when we tried this. Our two empty balloons are balanced. Now we're going to take one of them off and blow it up. All right. The balloon with air is heavier. Indeed. Straight, and then after, you can see after, it is definitely tipped. 
All right, so the air inside the balloon, there were more air molecules? Yeah, so think about it. Things have weight because they have mass. So this pen, if I were to drop it, it falls to the earth because it's made up of atoms. But if this pen, all of a sudden, it, it disappeared and there were no atoms in the pen, then that nothingness is not going to fall to earth because it doesn't have mass. And so if I have one pen versus 100 pens, the 100 pens are going to be heavier because there are more atoms. And with the balloon, if we have an empty balloon, let's say it only has 10 atoms of air in it. It's all, you know, pretty much squeezed shut. If I blow up the balloon, I have added millions of additional molecules to that balloon. Definitely. And we tried this out with our scale. And here's what we found with the scale. Empty balloon weighed 1.5 grams. And then we blew it up as big as we could and stuck it in that same cup. And it weighed 1.7 grams. Mm, so 0.2 grams of Ish. air All right, wow. got put in the balloon. And I think the reason that we sometimes, um, that people don't predict this accurately is because we're thinking of helium balloons. Mm -hmm. Because a balloon fold of helium, that floats, right? Yeah. But it floats because oxygen and nitrogen are heavier than the helium. If you took that helium balloon and you traveled to a planet that had an atmosphere of hydrogen, 100% hydrogen gas, all of a sudden your helium balloon would sink. It would fall to the ground. Okay, Qu question for you, science mom. Now, that's a really weird thing to think about, like helium <laughs> sinking. So, so helium pulls things up. Um, all right, why does the balloon fall slowly? It, well, it's, it's pretty light and there's air resistance. It's falling through air and the air molecules that are hitting it um, because it's so light, it falls. It falls more slowly because of the air resistance. Okay, n another question then. What about when we're in water? So when we're in water, if I hold my breath, I float to the top. What is that something? Well, if, if you similar, or yeah, if you take a full breath in water, you're going to float a little bit better because there's more air in you, so, and the air is less dense than the water. Oh, so the wa the water's sinking past me, is, and yeah, I'm yeah. I'm floating. All right, let's do our next question. So our next question, we are going to just scroll right down right. to the... So we're going to hang two balloons here, and we're going to blow air between these balloons. And then the question is, what is going to happen? Will the balloons stay put? Will they push apart? Or will they push together, or pull together? So I mean, what, what outcome would we expect? So think about it. Don't, don't just jump in and, and give an answer too quick, but I'm, we're going to go over to item pool and we are going to find out what the answer is yep. so if you blow air between two balloons the two balloons are hanging from a stick or something and they are a little bit far apart and the air between them starts moving faster what will the balloons do will they move together will they move apart or will they just stay the same yeah and i gotta say i didn't have a lot of intuition on this math one. dad guessed this one wrong yeah i mean <laughs> it, it happens it does and it's okay <laughs> to make a prediction that's not correct sometimes you even remember and learn more if your prediction is incorrect because then you're surprised math dad Ooh. was super surprised about this one i really was and that's, that's a good point science mom but i think so, we're giving hints let's so, sometimes we think that the what we it's, it's good if our expectations work out, but you're saying sometimes it's sometimes better to it's, be wrong. Yeah, if you're wrong and you're surprised, you'll learn more. And look, Math Dad. Said it will push apart. Well, we better find out, Science Mom. Will they push apart? The chat predicted the same thing that Math Dad predicted. Math Dad predicted mm. they would push apart. Let's play the video now, and you guys will see what actually happened. And it actually happened that they pushed to... this happen. So, and once they push together, if Math Dad's blowing really hard, they even pushed out. But if you blow really soft, sometimes you can get them to come in and just hold and they'll kind of hold together. And the reason that they draw together is because of the Bernoulli principle. And we'll talk about this more as we go through the next experiments. When air is moving fast, the pressure of that air drops. Okay. So and the l l less pressure so, so, But you still have atmospheric pressure on the other side of the balloons. And so you have low pressure in between and the balloons move toward that low pressure. Anytime you have low pressure, other air is going to move toward that low pressure area. Oh, that, that, that's pretty cool. So the, the, just the air, the regular air is pushing those in. Yep. Yep. Regular air is pushing, the, pushing from, those in. From, from the outside. Yeah. Fascinating. Right. Experiment number three. 
is one where we used some tissue paper, but if you don't have a roll of toilet paper, you can use any type of light tissue or even like a little piece of ribbon or something, anything that's really light. And the question is, when you blow over it, will it lift up? Will it hang down? Or will it curl around? What happens if you have fast moving air going over a roll of toilet paper with the toilet paper just leaning over the side? Hmm, that's a good question. I think I could try to argue any of these, these possibilities. So <laughs> yeah, let, let's go over to item pool and try answering this one. So yeah, will, will, it, lift will up? it lift up? Will it just stay where it was? Or will it actually start wrapping around the roll? And Ooh, we really know good question. We know we're going to be getting some low pressure over the top of that toilet paper roll because anytime we have air moving faster, we get low pressure. So which one of these things is going to happen? Ooh, so we have well, one category is definitely dominating the. What do you think, science one, puppy? He he's Here, waiting. Grab with, the toilet with paper. Baited breath. Ooh. All right. No, we we know what he'll do with the toilet paper. <laughs> he'll just chew this up. Can you blow? Blow. Blow. <laughs> blow. He's like, I won't blow, but I will bite it. Yes, get it yes close. you will. I, I, I don't <laughs> trust you, boy. You, you've showed me what you'll do. <clears throat> All right. The chat says that it will lift up. And lift up is Now, if you don't have very good lung capacity, it might not lift up quite as well. With Math Dad, we definitely had a more impressive result. And here he's just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> but it would counteracting gravity, right? Gravity would pull that straight down. Yes, gravity is pulling it down, and that's why the tissue paper hangs straight down. But the low pressure across the top is strong enough, creates enough lift that you get the paper blown up. <laughs> Whoa, too long. Are you helping me? <laughs> oh. I think the key is you want to really blow right at the right at, right the at that top, right at the top surface. <sighs> you okay, Math Dad? I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. Let's go to the next experiment. If we scroll on down, now we're going to look at a ping pong ball, a round object in a stream of fast moving air. So in the so, other two experiments, we were making the air move faster. But what if we have a hair dryer making the air move fast? Wait, this is a, not a cannon. It's a hair dryer. No, it's a hair dryer. Here. So like. Imagine that down here, this is like a blow dryer for drying hair. And, ah, yeah. okay, okay. So, so we put a ping pong ball in that stream of air, and the question is, what what will happen to the ball? Will it sh just shoot way into the air? Yeah, will it fly up into the air really high, or will it not really go up, but just sort of fall straight down, or will it hover in place? Those are our three choices. Pick which outcome you think is most likely in our poll, and if you are watching the replay, you can vote in the poll by going to science.mom slash earth science, or you can just say out loud what you predict. And if you make that prediction in advance, say out yeah. loud what you expect to happen, you will definitely learn more. All right. Math so, Dad, did so you predict this one correctly the first time that you heard about this experiment? I don't know if I did. I mean, but I, I have seen this one done many times, so it's hard to remember way, way back when I first saw it, but huh, so what's going to happen? to this ping pong ball. It looks like we have a clear winner. Yeah. Let's go ahead and finish and reveal. All right, chat says that this is going to hover in place. And the chat is correct. Here's our ping pong ball versus hair dryer. <clears throat> It's just floating beautifully. It is, but for the light ball, we needed a slower current of air. Oh. Now, in that, in that video, you could see why we recorded little videos for you because a hair dryer is really loud. And on that particular clip, I didn't quite get the volume down low enough. So I have two different types of ping pong balls here and they both feel really light to me, but this one is a lot lighter than this one. And it turns out that with my regular hair dryer that does not have a very low setting, I can't get this ball to float because it is too light and it gets pushed up beyond where the hair dry, the air is moving uniform and fast. And so sometimes with these experiments, more than one prediction might be right. With this ball and my regular hair dryer, 
it always <laughs> flies up. And to get it to stay, I would have to get creative and like encase the whole thing in a lot of duct tape to make it a heavier ball. Mm. But if I have a different hair dryer that has a low setting, then this one will stay really well. Okay, so what's keeping the ball in the air though? What let's, is keeping the ball in the air? clarify this for me. It's the Bernoulli principle. So when the air hits the ball, it has to go around the ball and it speeds up and you get low pressure on every single side of the ball. And what's really mm. cool about this is that you can make the ball change how it moves just by interfering with that low pressure. If you bring your hand down over the top of the ball, but don't touch it, the ball's gonna drop and move side to side because there's not oh. as much low pressure here providing that pull upward. Well, that's kind of cool. So it's low pressure all around the ball. That's what's keeping it in place. Yeah. All right. And and did you say that you should use the cool, cool setting? Is yes. It, some, apparently some blow dryers have a cool button with it'll blow non-hot air. They do, most do. So if you push this cool button, then the air does not come out hot. If the air comes out hot, you need to be careful that you don't melt your ping pong ball or, your or, finger. or burn your <laughs> finger because the air can get really hot. All right. Let's begin accepting answers for our next one. Oh no, well, so the, the next situation is, what if we tip the hair dryer sideways? So it's not going straight up or down anymore. Is it going to shoot into the air? Will it just fall to the ground or will it continue hovering? What, so, yeah. what do you think will happen when we tip that hair dryer to the side? Mm, so I understand the question what will happen because it, it it really wasn't that surprising maybe that, that it would hold straight up yeah because we it, have air pushing up and gravity pulling down but yeah if we move it to the side okay that, then what's going to happen that, that one definitely seems like it would be a lot trickier and with this question off. it all depends on how far we move it to the side let's say that we're just moving it about almost a 45 degree angle so here's straight up and down yeah. we're going almost halfway if we move it that far, what's going to happen? The chat seems a little less sure on this one. Each of them is getting some votes. Yeah. Kaladin wants a ping pong ball. Yeah. He, oh, he, he does. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe if I watch closely, <laughs> it will get close enough that I can bite it. <laughs> That's what he wants. Keep trying, Kaladin. All right. I'm going to finish up the poll. The chat says that it will con continue hovering. And, and that is the best answer, but it mm -hmm. all does depend on how far you tip it. But it looks like the most common answer was fall to the fall to the ground. Yeah, let's uh, so, let's sorry, find that, out. That's what the chat said is that it would fall to the ground. Yeah, let's let's find out. And really, it does it does all depend on how far you move it. So see, I can go close to forty five degrees, oh. and it stays. Oh, and wow. With a leaf blower and a beach ball, you can go even farther. This is from a school visit I did back in 2019. Wow. Okay. So with a beach ball and a leaf blower, you can see you can get almost down to a 30 degree angle and that low pressure around the ball is strong enough to counteract the force of gravity. And when I say it's the low pressure holding it up, I mean, in a sense, you could say, well, it's really all of the air pushing in against the low pressure. That's what's holding it up. Pretty amazing, right? Oh, yeah, that, that is pretty cool. All right, science mom, i got to ask, though, what if you tried a beach ball with a hairdryer? A beach ball with a hairdryer is typically too heavy, but if you have a very mm. small beach ball over a hairdryer and it's on a high setting, sometimes it will kind of wobble and float just right above the hairdryer. It all depends. All right, but what if you tried a ping pong ball and the leaf blower. Um, the ping pong ball and the leaf blower, I've never been able to get it to float. Again, it's a, it's too powerful. And so it shoots that ping pong ball up so high that the ping pong ball is above where you have that nice current of air and it's up where the air is starting to behave more chaotically and it will drop. All right. Good question. All right, let's go to our next question. This one's a fun one. Ooh, if what? we try more than one at once, what's gonna happen? So if you did like two or three balls at the same so time, would they all just fall? Would they maybe try to do a crazy dance with each other or would will they, they line up ooh, and hover in place? That'd be kind of cool. All right. So we've got answers coming in on the polls. What is going to happen? So th th this one, we really don't have as much information to go on. 
And I hope you'll make a prediction. If you're watching the replay, just say it out loud. What do you think will happen if you try more than one ping pong ball at a time? Man. And is, is it even possible? Or will they all just knock each other out? Yeah, the what? hair dryer will be like, stop it. This is too hard. <laughs> We're about to find out. Let's go ahead and finish and reveal. And? Do a crazy dance is most popular with hover in place being the next. Mm. I'm really curious. Yeah. Let's let's find out. And this was experiment number six. Blue one was doing its own thing, but <gasps> Oh. So if the balls are different weights where one is lighter and one is heavier, then you can get them to stay one on top of the other, other and hover in place. Isn't that cool? Okay, that is, is is way cool. Is that blue ball spinning? Yes, they're both they were both spinning. They were both spinning really fast. So whether it is a leaf blower you're using or a hair dryer, if one of the balls is larger or heavier, and then the ball on top is smaller or lighter, then you can get this cool stacked phenomenon where the air goes around one ball and then it goes around the other and they will just hover in place. But if the balls are the same size and the same weight, it's usually a chaotic dance where they'll bump into each other and knock each other out of the airstream and collide and it's kind of crazy. So what was the right answer on that one? So there were two right answers. Okay. And I guess the best answer is it depends. And sometimes that's the way science is. Sometimes we make a prediction and we get mixed results where sometimes it's one way and sometimes it's another way. Makes sense. Because yeah, not everyone's going to have the same strength of hair dryer or the same weight of ping pong balls. Apparently the ones that we sent out in the kits were, yeah, were the, pretty light. The, these, so if you ordered one of our supply kits and you got, because some, <clears> some people got colored balls and some people got light balls. If you got the light balls, make sure to use the low setting on your hair dryer and then it should float. But the high setting, it will just go up to the top. Huh. All right, next question. All right, up next, we have the situation of a dented ball. So these ping pong balls, if you squeeze them or step on them, they can, they can get a little tiny dent in them. And then is that going to change the behavior? So what do you predict? Will it shoot in way into the air? Will it fall to the ground? Or will it hover in place? Hmm. So that's... That's our question. All right, I'm gonna move over to the poll and let's see what the chat thinks about this one. And if it's dented, I mean, we have different sizes of dents. Like obviously if you dented it and stepped on it so it was completely flat like a pancake, well, that's yeah, gonna really work. change how it works. But what if it's just a little bit of a dent where it's mostly round but yeah. pushed in on one side? What will happen? Mm. That's Super interesting question. I, I like the way that you've got all these variations, Science Mom. You, you, you try one and you're like, oh, that works. What if we change it up, change one of the variables in it, and then we, we try to see, or we try to predict what will happen, then we run an experiment to see. And I bet you can think of additional variations to do. We have nine things for you to try here, but those aren't the only nine things you can do. There are other ways you can experiment with air. All right, chat says that it's gonna fall to the ground. That was the most common prediction with um, hover in place being next. All now right. let's find out. Ooh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Um, so much suspense, science mom. So much suspense and <laughs> oh no, I can't find my video, math dad. Oh, maybe it didn't get loaded. <laughs> well, okay, spoil the suspense then. Uh, it, it doesn't work if it is dented. <laughs> And in fact, why don't, here, hand me the, the hairdryer right here. We will just do it really quick, even though it's super noisy when we use our, it doesn't tip this one. All right. So here I have a dented ping pong ball. And if it were round, it would hover right away. <laughs> That's the best hovering I've ever seen from a dented ball. But that dent is not. One more time. One more time is not as big as this dent. Watch when we put this one on. <laughs> All right, now do the other one. Okay, oh, the, the dents are staying at the bottom and the top. They're on opposite poles. They were opposite, but if we put it sideways like this, <laughs> then it doesn't go. So that was, 
<laughs> that was nice. unexpected. I've never had a dented ball hover that well the, before. They usually flop, and you're like, no way. That the, that little dent could make that big of a difference. But you're saying that the, the reason it doesn't work is? Because there is a difference in the amount of pressure. So we remember we said the reason the ball hovers is because you have even pressure on all sides pulling. Well, if you have a dent, all of a sudden you have less pressure on that side with a dent. But our ball that had the dent that was hovering well, it had two opposite dents. It had a dent up here and a dent down here. And those two and opposite dents- They were just dents, staying on bottom and top? I, yeah, I think they were sort of balancing each other. So when it was this way with the dents on top and bottom, it hovered pretty well. <laughs> but when we turned it sideways, so the dents were on the side, then it, then it didn't then play. The, if the pressure to the sides is not equal, then it's gonna go one way or the other. Yes. And yeah, lose the equilibrium. All so, right. so far, we've learned a bit about air and how air works with these experiments. We've learned about how air changes how it moves and how the pressure is when it's fast. We are going to do one more experiment with how air works with floating over a hairdryer. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about airplanes and flight. All right. So. Up next, we have the situation of a balloon. So if you put a balloon in front of a hairdryer, it's probably just gonna be too powerful and it's gonna yeah. shoot it too far away. But what if you put a little weight inside the balloon, mm. like a penny or a raisin? Or a dried cranberry. Mm. This is a great alternative if you are watching this video and you don't have ping pong balls at home. If you don't have ping pong balls, if you have balloons, you can do many of the same experiments by putting a little weight in them. Because a balloon by itself is too light, but a balloon with a penny in it or some other weight, it's gonna behave differently. And I'm seeing quite a few predictions for one of them. One of them definitely has more votes. Yeah, well, boy, this one seems very different. It's just such a bigger object. It is bigger and it's I, not I don't, I don't perfectly know if you'd, round it, it, Well, it isn't, yeah. So the air flow can't be exactly uniform. Hmm. Patience, science mom. Patience. You I'm, can't end the poll. <laughs> I'm ready to find out. I'm ready to find out. <laughs> it won't change the answer. Hover was the most popular answer with fall to the ground being mm. next. And mm. let's find out. What's going to happen? Because a floating balloon. Or is it a falling balloon? It hovers. Ooh, and it hovers, and it a, hovers a lot higher. So high that I had to take that hair dryer and drop it down below where <laughs> you could see with the camera. This was really fun to watch because the little dried cranberry that we had in the balloon was bouncing around like crazy. <laughs> and it was really dynamic compared to the ping pong ball, which just tends to rotate in space. Yeah. So you're saying a lot of the experiments, we, we could, instead of using ping pong balls, we could have just used the balloon. You can try a yeah, very similar thing with balloons and you can try tipping it to the side and doing some of those other things we did too. Yeah, I wonder if two balloons at once would work, yeah. Two balloons at once is really tricky, but if the weight is different, it can be done. It takes a lot of trial and error though. Ooh, yeah, so I got penny in one and there's a raisin in the other. So it's, I'd it's, say even heavier and, even, even and, and, different, and different sizes. Oh, different size balloons. Yeah, don't, don't blow them up quite as big. That's an interesting variable. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about flight a little bit now. So the title of this experiment or, the, or this, this, this day yeah, is how do airplanes fly? But so far, we've been talking mostly about air. And that's because to understand how airplanes fly, you need to understand how air works. The air has weight and the air has pressure. There's pressure around us all the time. And math, Dad, do you know what I realized? I just forgot. What'd you forget? I forgot the leaf blower edition of Tissue Trouble. Oh, you want, you want to go back? Okay. I'm just going to show a video real fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it, you saw that if we blow over the top of a toilet paper roll, you can make it lift up. Well, what if we combine a leaf blower <gasps> with a toilet paper roll? Well, then it will lift up for sure, right? It will. <laughs> I did this to Math Dad yesterday, and my daughter thought it was so much fun that she begged and asked me to please do it to her next. So here we go leaf blower edition <laughs> he's on the other side of the room here <laughs> and that that was the whole roll and that was that was a like, double roll a, like a I double think it was a quadruple roll that was a lot of toilet yeah. paper so kids before you do this one make sure you ask your parents Oh, 
kids in that class thought it was funny. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to unroll a whole entire roll of toilet paper with a leaf blower, but this is definitely something that if you do at home, you have to have your parents' permission to do. Because um, Math Dad and I now, for the next little <laughs> while, we have a sack in our in our bathroom with a whole bunch of toilet paper <sighs> crammed into it that we get to use. And that's not as, as enjoyable as having it on a roll nice and neat. No, not, no. not, not at all. The, <laughs> the sacrifices we do in the name of science. <laughs> But on a more serious note, you can get into trouble if you pull out something like a leaf blower without asking for permission first. So definitely ask before you do that. <laughs> All right, now on to airplanes. So we have two different fun things you can make just from folding a piece of paper and they will both, in a sense, they will fly. One is a paper helicopter and the other is a paper airplane. Now, will these fly indefinitely? No, but if you drop them from somewhere high, they are gonna move through the air in a different way. And my question is, how will they move through the air? Let's go ahead and share this, share this screen. So if I drop them, let's say from the top of a really tall bridge, are they both gonna fall straight down? Will they both glide out away from the bridge or will the path be different? Will one of them glide and one of them drop or vice versa? Mm. What do you think? So good, good questions. I bet they have some intuition with the paper airplanes but I'm less confident in Here, whether they've seen take, the, this helicopter before. You take science puppy real quick and I will show them how the helicopter works. Ooh. Now our helicopter works even a little bit better if you put a paper clip on the end to give it a little more weight. I didn't put a paper clip on this one. I just folded the bottom. So I'm gonna toss it up to the air. Whoa, it just went, went spinning past there. Yeah. Oh, didn't work quite as well that <laughs> time because I tossed it upside down. Oh, man. No, that one didn't work either. No, it didn't. <laughs> and this is why it works better with the paper clip. The, the paper clip really does. There we go. A, ooh, it, it's just do, doing a whirly bird, twirly bird, kind of like a, a seed, right? Yeah. Some, some seeds when they fall off trees. Really similar to, they call them samaras, the seeds from maple trees. All right. They said we're going to have different outcomes by dropping these. Yes. And that is most definitely what we see because the helicopter works by spinning around and it catches air and spins as it rotates and that slows how it falls. The airplane, on the other hand, the paper airplane relies on thrust. It needs a forward motion to get into the air and to travel. And it's the same with real airplanes. And now if you look Wait, down- we, we try it though, will, will you drop the plane? Oh. Yeah, what happens if you drop a plane? It lands oh, the, 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 the nose kind of fell faster, it looked like. And it then... did. And I, I dropped it right here above my head, but it hit you in the elbow. So it was starting kind of a forward path. Mm. So if you just drop an airplane, it will tend to glide forward. Gotcha. All right. So you're saying down at the bottom of page 23, you've got some, some drawings here. So what's going on? Yes. So like we talked about with our ping pong ball, we have low pressure on all sides of the ping pong ball and that's what helps it to stay in the airstream. And th that pressure is even when the ball is round, but if you have a dented ball, usually it will fall out of the airstream right away. But we saw with our little dent that we did live, um, if it's even dense on both sides, sometimes you can get one that will hover pretty well. <laughs> and now with an airplane wing, an airplane wing has a curve over the top, and this means that the air over the top has to move faster. And anytime we have increased speed, the Bernoulli principle tells us that then that gives us low pressure. Whoa, whoa okay, I, I'm confused. You're saying, you're saying a curve made the air go faster. Ex explain what's happening here with this wing. This is a cross section? Yes, of an a cross wing? section of an airplane wing or a bird wing. The air has to move faster to go over the curve. And anytime air moves faster, you get lower pressure. But there's pressure around the wing all the time just from the atmosphere. There's always pressure around everything from the atmosphere. So since this air pressure drops, this air pressure is still the same and okay. it pushes the airplane up. Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying to understand what this curve is doing. So you're saying, so like an, two our air molecules here are gonna split. One of them will go under and one of them will go over. Yeah, but you drew it backwards. Oh, uh, okay, fine. They're gonna travel in those directions, these yes. two air molecules. And you're saying because the wing is curved bigger here, the, the air molecule that went over the top has to go further. Has to go faster. So it had to further. go faster in order to travel that further path. Exactly. And that's 
what's creating the lower pressure up top. Yep. Whoa. Wait, that's how airplanes work? That is one of the main reasons why airplanes can fly is because of that lower pressure that they get over their wings and that produces lift that helps the airplane get in the air. But the other super important part is speed. A big airplane is not going to be able to take off from an airport mm. by traveling 10 miles per hour across the <laughs> runway. If it's nope. going 10 miles per hour across the one runway, it does not have enough lift <sighs> or enough momentum to fly. I've been in an airplane before and just as they're taking off, I mean, they, they got that seatbelt sign on and then you can really feel it. You push back in your seat because they're accelerating going way faster. Way faster. They're, they're, sure, they're trying to get enough speed so that the Bernoulli principle will help lift them off the ground? Exactly. Oh, exactly. That's so cool. But helicopters, they can hover in place. Helicopters use a propeller that spins around and the blades are angled so that as it's spinning, it's effectively pushing air down to pull the plane up. That's how they, or pull the aircraft up. Well, that's pretty cool. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, very, very different principles. Yeah. Are there airplanes that can can do that? They can, they can just go straight up? Um, not very many. And they work. They they work differently. There there is there is a jet that has like these oh, really powerful engines that point a, down and a harrier jet. Yeah, can, blast air down. But that's that's totally different. But but other planes that they need they that have forward, to be going forward moment. All right, Math Dad, you've learned a lot about the Bernoulli principle, and hopefully you have two by watching. So here is one final question for you. I have a card right here, and I'm going to poke a needle through it. Oh. I almost don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't poke that needle through my leg, science man. All right, so here's my playing card. I'm going to poke a needle through it, and now I have a spool of thread. And if I blow through this spool of thread so that my card is pushed against mm. it, will I be able to get the card to stay? Ooh. Okay, so just, I, let, let, let's talk this one through before we even try it, because I, if you blow through, that's going to be putting force against the card, but... Did you see that? It stayed. Okay, so what force was causing that card to stay? The low pressure. So the, the air that's coming out is going sideways as it hits the card? Yes. And, and as it's going sideways and moving fast, it's creating low pressure, and that low pressure is effectively pulling the card up. Here's one on just a regular piece of paper. And again, I just have a small hole and then a flat surface here on the end of the spool. And if <laughs> I start blowing, when it's down a little bit and then kind of push it up until I feel it catch, it will stay. Oh man. Nope. You were wrong, science mom. <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> blow long enough. <laughs> but okay. that's that's another example of the Bernoulli principle yeah, at work. That's really cool. You're, you're blowing that hard and it's, it's still sticking because I just would think that the forward force would be much stronger than the force from this low pressure system that you're causing, but apparently not. So I saw an interesting question there in the chat. Don't some airplanes have like a propeller in front? Does the propeller keep them in the air? Some do and the propeller helps, but the, the curve of the wing is also really important. And when the Wright brothers built the first airplane, um, they actually observed how birds fly and they saw that the birds have that curved shape, and that was one of their key parts of their design. Math Dad, what do you think will happen if I turn on the hair dryer right now? Um, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Saboteur! So, I want to just point out real quick before we go to Q&A that there are several fun variations that you can do on this, and I hope that you will not only do the experiments that we showed you, I hope you will be inventive and try some other ones. And one of my favorites is the fact that a paper towel tube and a ping pong ball are close to the same size, but the ball can fit through. And there's some really cool variations you can do with that. Can we, can we try one real quick? Just just, just one? Just if, one. If you, if you hover the, what happens if you put the tube on the ball while it's floating in the air? That requires me to get a ball and they all flew over here. Well, somebody just shot the balls. They, they should know better than to that do that because then they have to deal with the consequences <laughs> of their actions. All right, so we're going to get a ball hovering. All right. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, so it, it shot almost to the ceiling. It did, it almost hit the ceiling. <laughs> 
All right, before we do our birthday shout outs, I have five questions that I wanna answer real quick that came in either through email or in um, previous lessons that were really good ones. So we'll answer these real quick and then we'll do some Q&A from, from today's class. So our first question is from Caleb, rain versus sleet versus snow. Does it matter where in the atmosphere rain freezes? And there's a great graphic here from the um, the yeah the National Weather Association, and it shows that it, you have almost all precipitation in the especially in the winter time starts out as snow, mm. but if you have a layer of warm air and it's warm all the way to the ground, it'll turn to rain. If it gets cold right before ground, it will be sleet or freezing rain, and then of course if it's cold all the way down, it will be snow. Well, that's weird to think about that most rain starts as snow. Most rain does actually start as snow. It all depends on the altitude of the cloud and where where on earth you are, but most rain does start out as snow. I had no idea. And freezing rain, for that to happen, the temperature of the ground actually has to be colder than the temperature of the air right above it. Oh. So you kind of have this strange condition where things get super cold and the ground gets really chilled and then slightly warmer air comes through. And so you get rain that then lands on really cold ground or the rain can get super cooled as it's going through that cold air right before it hits. <laughs> and then another great question from Kate, why do some areas of dew, in, when you see dew on grass in the morning, mm -hmm. why do some areas have a lot and some areas don't even if the temperature is the same? Ooh. And there are a couple of things that can happen. One is that the humidity might actually vary a little bit. You might have one area that's more humid than another area. And then the other thing is the temperature of the ground or the plants themselves. Sometimes you have a certain area, especially like out in the open, that is exposed to the night sky. That area can get a lot colder than an area underneath a tree that is sort of sheltered or blocked from the night sky. So we talked last time about the dew point, the relative humidity. The cold air can't hold as much water. And if there's more water in the air than the air can hold, that's then when you're getting drops. dew yep. or rain or yeah, fog. So, so cold, cold ground that's below the dew point, that's where you get dew. And that leads right into our next question from um, Cian. Why can't cold air hold as much water as warm air? Ooh, Cian, that's a good question. Mm. Ooh, ooh, wait, wait, is it just because when you've got warm molecules, they're more active? That is at its heart. So warm molecules are more active. They have more energy. And air that is warm, once a water molecule evaporates and becomes water vapor, it has more energy and that warm air can have more molecules going around inside it. But another way to think about it that might just help you remember that warm air can hold more water than cold is to think of air is mostly empty space, right? In between the air molecules, you have all this empty space. And in between warm air, you have more empty space than in between cold air where the oh. molecules aren't moving as much. So that's another the, way to so think about it. There's more room for the, for the water. For the water. Yeah. Huh. But, the, but the real reason is just the amount of energy and warm air with more energy can have more water molecules. And then Ibrahim asked, why, where are the ionosphere and the magnetosphere? You guys last week built amazing models of the atmospheric layers and we loved seeing the ones that you shared with us. And where is the ionosphere? Is it up in the thermosphere? So the ionosphere is actually anywhere that there are charged particles. We talked about the ions. Yes, I, I get it. We talked about the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. And in the thermosphere, we said those particles are charged. In the exosphere, the particles are charged too. So the ionosphere is anywhere from the thermosphere and up. And sometimes, depending on what's happening with the sun, you can even have charged particles right at the top of the mesosphere. And that is what the ionosphere is. So it's kind of like if you were saying, okay, there are types of transportation. You can go by a skateboard or a bike or a car. Those are like the layers of the atmosphere. But then when we wanna know like what types of transportation use gasoline, we say car. And there are lots of different types of cars. Never mind, that was terrible analogy. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know that, that works. <laughs> but, but, but so inside of the layer, the thermosphere, we have a lot of ions and they call that the ionosphere. And so the, a lot of waves will bounce back, like AM radio, for example, and you're able to send waves around the curvature of the Earth because it will bounce off the ionosphere. Yes. And the magnetosphere is that top layer of the ionosphere. And the magnetosphere goes way beyond the layers of the atmosphere that we talked about. It's a lot bigger. When we talk about the layers of the Earth, we'll talk more about that. But the ionosphere, what I was trying to say is like, 
it contains several of our layers that we learned about. Gotcha. So we learned about troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. exosphere. And it's those top two, thermosphere and exosphere, those are always in the ionosphere and sometimes parts of the mesosphere too. Gotcha. All right. Our last question. I'm going to ask you this one, Math Dad. Okay, I'm ready. This one's from Michael. Please give an in-depth explanation to what would happen if all of the clouds on Earth suddenly fell to the ground at the same time as rain. Oh, my goodness. Well, we said 70% of the Earth was usually covered in clouds. And we said that a, a storm cloud would weigh like a million pounds on average. So if all the clouds, I mean, they're not all storm clouds, but if they all fell to the Earth at once, that would be like getting... I would just guess like a half inch of rain immediately everywhere across the globe. And, oh, that would be crazy. It'd be devastating. Like a lot of buildings would so, wash away. And So the first, ah! the first thing that would happen besides torrential rains and flooding everywhere is that all of a sudden the temperature around the whole entire planet would get a lot warmer because we'd have so much more light hitting. Ah. But then immediately we would get a lot of clouds forming because when light hits the ocean, and it warms up the ocean, you get water evaporating, and then that water that with warm air rises and it condenses and forms clouds. So you wouldn't be able to have an earth with no clouds for very long, but it would get a lot hotter for you know the day and a half before we formed more clouds. Yeah, well, you guys have some good questions. Yes, very good questions. A lot better than our answers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna answer um, a couple questions that came into the chat today. Um, Lada asked, what can you be used instead of a hairdryer? And you can actually use a straw. So math that I have, I'm going to get one of our, one of our light ping pong balls. Cause these are just a little lighter and easier. Mm -hmm. And this little wooden tube has, um, a tube that goes up here so that when I blow, the air is going to go straight up. Ooh, nicely done science mom. And the same thing can be done with a straw or some type of pipe that can just direct the force of the air up. Ooh, a straw. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. And you could try the angled version with a straw. You just have to have lots of air. So, like I'm full of hot air. So. And great question here. Is there anything else a wing needs beside the curve to make a plane fly effectively from Isabel? There are definitely um, differences in how wide the wing is and how long it is change how effective it is. And if you look at different types of planes, you'll see that based on how they fly, some wings are wide, some wings are narrow, and that gives you differences with how well they glide versus how well they can maneuver, you know, turning side to side. And planes have other things, wings have like flaps and things that you can use for maybe for turning or for braking to some yep. extent. So, and, uh, and those are definitely important for taking off and, and landing. And this is why birds, they don't have wings that just stick out and lock and can't ever be moved. They're able to bend their wings so they can control how they fly. All right. Very good question. We are just about out of time, you guys. We went a little bit long today. I want to wish a very happy birthday to Bori, who has a birthday tomorrow. A bon anniversaire to Eleanor from Quebec, who turns 12 years old today. Happy birthday, Eleanor. And a happy birthday to Sam Bowman, who has a birthday today. And also a very special shout out to science mom, Jamie, who was not here today because she is going up for tenure and has a meeting today to get tenure. Also, so, a happy birthday shout out to Brielle. Happy so, birthday, Brielle, today. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Growing, growing up, growing big, growing strong. I hope you're, you're learning a lot. And thanks, science mom, for teaching us so much. Work hard, grow smart. We'll see you next week.